was born in Sampaloc, Manila, and I left in, I guess I was two. My family first moved out of the country when I was five years old. Actually, I was born in Singapore, then I moved to Indonesia. My dad's first assignment was in 1997 in India, so I moved when I was nine years old. We went to Nigeria, we stayed there for four years. I moved to Greece, then Saudi Arabia. Then we moved to Ivory Coast for about two months. And we moved in 2001 in, to Germany. We moved back to the Philippines for one year. Back to the Philippines for a short fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade stint. Then we moved to Guam for two years. And then I moved to the United States for 12 years. And to New Delhi in India for one year. We moved back to the Philippines when I was 16. Then to South Africa for two years. And then in 2007, I moved to France for one year. And I've lived in the Philippines for almost four years now. So I was 15 years old when I first, uh, when we finally came back. And then I moved back to Manila in 2000. And well, I moved to the Philippines for the first time when I was in grade five, when I was 10. And there, and then the culture shock ensued. Uh, my name is Andre Confiado. I know um, the whole uh, phenomenon of Philippine diaspora started in the 1970s. So it's de there are definitely many, many kids like me. But sometimes you can be very much alone in such a crowded place. Uh, my name is Alan Leeson. Since I grew up in other countries, I don't have a lot of the same cultural uh, assumptions that people do. It's easier to be abroad and just be a foreigner and struggle through because that's what's expected of you. But here in the Philippines, if you're expected to understand what, what's going on and you don't, they actually give you a harder time. Uh, my name is Jamila Arnajadi. The R stands for Rojas. So I feel like even though I love living in the Philippines, I feel like mentally I don't really fit in in terms of my worldviews or opinion on how I want to live my life. My name is Pauline Lacanilao. I'm Filipino, 100%, which people often ask me. Are you really Filipino? Yeah, 100%. Got the papers, got the license. I have everything. Well, as a third culture kid, I managed to finally grasp something and hold on to it and say, like, I'm Filipino. I'm partly French, partly German, partly Indian, but I am definitely third culture. And you can't completely remove that background uh, for as long as you live. My third culture identity is always going to be a part of how I deal with the world. I find that being TCK makes me much less interested in Filipino culture, much less interested in American culture, and way more interested in the baseline humanity that connects us all. What joys do we share? What pains are universal? And my mom is Filipino from Cavite, and my dad is Algerian. He's from North Africa. I couldn't call myself Algerian. I guess that's why I call myself Filipino, really, because that part of me, the Algerian part of me, is just about what I look like, right? So my body type and my hair. But other than that, there's like nothing I can draw on that would make me Algerian. Well, I think I'm Filipino and I feel like I'm Filipino, but I'm a very small percentage of what is Filipino. Another thing that like my parents really ingrained in me was the fact that you know wherever you go, you're still Filipino. I mean, this is this is your these are your roots. This is where you're from. This is where we're from. This is where your grandparents are from. I call being Filipino gravity for me. Regardless of where I go, my being Filipino pulls, keeps pulling at me. I can never get rid of it. Even if I tried, which I'm not, but I have tried, I cannot stop. I identify myself as Filipino and I don't mind saying so when I'm talking to other Filipinos or to foreigners. And I, I, uh, I'm Filipino, but I suppose a different sort of Filipino but there's enough space in the Philippine identity for me. It's strange how, um, even though I consider myself Filipino, I'm always struggling to prove it. 
like just because I'm not good at the language, just because there are lots of things about me that are different. Why is our definition of Filipino so narrow to begin with? Being Filipino, I guess, is more about what you decide you're going to be, who you decide to, to identify yourself, who you decide to, what community you decide to belong to. I would like to see a time when people are more open about it and, and people like me are less guilty about being different. I briefly thought about moving back to Singapore uh, when I was visiting with my dad when I got older. But the more I visited, the more it seemed like such a closed off, overly conservative place and like with hardly any space to grow. And I felt like, uh, at least in the Philippines, you can be whoever you want as long as you don't hurt anyone, mm -hmm. right? As long as you're not a complete jerk about it. Uh, you can still live whatever life you feel like best suits you. So I still think of the Philippines as home. I can't imagine myself uh, living anywhere else. The fact that I built my most, my strongest friendships here, that I've had relationships uh, in the Philippines. The fact that uh, we have a house here and that my family is based here. In all of those uh, different ways, I have a stake in the Philippines. More so than any other part of the world. So if home has any sort of definition in the Philippines fits. So much of me wants to say it's not home, but I guess I can't deny that I like where I live and I feel comfortable. Um, I feel comfortable in my own bed. I, yeah. I, I'm comfortable. I don't know, I don't know yet if that's home or if I'm just saying it because I'm out of lack of a better word. I think just being loyal to one place, it would, I, that wouldn't be me. I would, I am very open towards other countries living in other places and if I'm, if I'm just like no I'm just I just want to be in the Philippines no, I might settle down here who knows I, I don't know yet but yeah it's it can be home it is home